It's really the two main icon buildings that are nostalgic, that are part of the new entry, are the Pan Pacific Auditorium, Nostalgic Turnstiles, as well as the Carstay Circle Theater. And one of the things about Buena Vista Street is none of it exists anywhere else. It's an idealized version of Los Angeles that never existed, with the exception of some of the two of the key um, pieces of architecture, which are interpretations of uh, pre-existing buildings. Um, once you enter the turnstiles, of course we don't have the berm like Disneyland with the tunnels, so that sense of immersion that's created by the berm, we don't have. Coulter alluded to the, the hub being off-center and uh, creating that sense of, of space, but we do have a, a metaphoric town square at the beginning of this sketch. Uh, again, you're seeing representations of early concept work and later concept work, so it's an amalgam of, of drawings here. But we've got our own little town square area that uh, will have a red car trolley stop, and as the slide says, red car trolley. Um, <laughs> and I'm controlling the slides, so these guys kick me, they want me to advance it, so keep your eye on it. Um, the red car trolley. Uh, it's a, it's a model of a Pacific Electric uh, a trolley that at one time a thousand miles of track across Southern California from the desert to the mountains to the oceans and it was used for real estate development and transportation and um, I think the last car ran in 1961. So we brought them back at, at California Adventure. Uh, they're being fabricated right now. We have two of them that are in fabrication. Uh, each one will have a different paint job. One will be a pre one will be sort of an as-delivered 1915s era paint job, and the other will be a later paint job, like you see in the sketch here. They're modeled after the actual what Pacific Electric called the Hollywood cars, which was a, a car that a lot of people are familiar with. It's kind of the textbook car you see going down Hollywood Boulevard in old, old photographs. So that's, uh, that's something we're working on here. Um, so just about every, every scene that you see in, in, in Buena Vista Street will have the red car represented somewhere trying to wing along the track. So we're, we're pretty excited about that. Not only that, but the overhead wires for the trolley um, will create another visual uh, cap so that your eyes are down in the scene. We don't, want, we don't want people to look up and out into space here. We really want to get that sense of closure and that sense of a neighborhood that's important to us. Now we'll get into the architectural style. I'll turn it over to Colton. So as we sort of dig it into the street, you know, you know, it gets back to focusing on, you know, core Disney lessons. If you take Main Street and you take all the Disney scale and you start to divide up the sides of buildings, you become, you have more of a believable and, and friendlier place. So we did a lot of research and we were looking at a lot of historical uh, photographs. Um, there is one facade here you'll see later. This is the Jay, Jay Newberry uh, facade where these these panels inspired one of our facades. But what we really did is take pieces of buildings, not creating you know, whole facades. We didn't want you to come and see Buena Vista Street and drive up somewhere in Los Angeles and see the actual building. That'd be kind of a letdown. So we worked, it was much more difficult to actually reinvent all these facades. And uh, there were five architects involved. Um, my philosophy was that if one person drew the street, it would look the same somehow. So it'd be better to turn it over to, to different sets of hands and that you would have a more believable uh, product in the end run that it was actually looked like it was built over time. So when it's open, you can all let me know if, it, if that was a successful <laughs> theory. Yeah. Um, so um, again, we start looking at things and you start seeing details. There are posters of the era. Again, you know, detailing and how some of these elements really worked to create that sense of credibility. You know, architecture cred credibility, that there was a fabrication, there's a love and passion for materials, and there was a lot of hard work that went into these original buildings that somehow always seems to be lost with some of the more contemporary architecture. So we were focused on, you know, the level of quality, the street had to be completely believable, we had to get the quality level up so that it was on par with the rest of our main streets because otherwise, you know, we wouldn't be doing our job. So. And I would say too that, that if our story is not credible, if our architecture is not credible, if the details aren't credible, then our story isn't credible and we've lost, we've lost our guests and we've lost the story. So 
that sort of uh, that sort of effort and attention to detail is is very important to us. So now we start getting into some development of elevations for buildings. This is again an early concept sketch. This is the north elevation of uh, Los Feliz Van and Dime. But you can see that what we're doing now is trying, as we're developing a sense of the scale, we're also referencing images from ex either existing or historical photographs. So we always can check ourselves that we're really creating a place in time with this particular spirit of the architecture that's going to be believable. And we did this as for every facade as we marched down the street, and we did a, a number of large-scale just facade models to really check ourselves that we were, you know, detailing things appropriately. And I would say too that architectural compression is something that we've we've uh, used as well because. As you know, on Main Street, the, the facades are fairly small. If you really step back and look at them, they're romanticized, but they're smaller than an actual building would, would be. And here, in order to achieve the look and the density that we want, Coulter's done a magnificent job of um, doing exactly that. The problem is a little bit different here because we have existing buildings that we're putting, you know, New, we're extending, but we're also putting new facades. And so the vertical geometry was a challenge in terms of we had a box that we had to cover, but we had to give it a Disney scale. So we went through a lot of hard work and iterations to bring that scale down to the Disney scale, yet still do the job of uh, you know, adequately um, cladding all the buildings. This is again part of the Elias and um, Co. facade. This is the uh, east uh, facade. Just south of Hyperion Bridge. Again, you can see some of the, uh, the source inspiration for some of the decoration that's going to go on to this elevation. Uh, as, as you can see here, um, we've got thousands and thousands of hours of work in this, and, and, and it's important to say that because, you know, we're kind of doing a little bit of everything. We are creating a city street, a, a number of kind of an amalgam of city streets that have been, you know, seemingly built over time and creating those layers and creating the different hands of the of the architects of that period and you know um, what we're doing there and and I'll tell you again it, it's the nth degree it's going you know that that extra thousand yards to, to deliver that detail and and I will say you know I was joking about the construction fences and I'll joke until we open but, um, <laughs> but the construction so when you do walk by these construction fences um, that are, you know, going up in this area, you're, you have firsthand knowledge now and can spread it around, I hope, you know, of what really is going on back there and why those fences are up and why it's so important because we have to go all the way with every single little detail from research, you know, inception, all the way through design, all the way through construction and delivery, um, you know, to bring that to you. So. That's why yeah. we're saying, you know. It, it's a challenge with an operating theme park to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and believe me. Um, we appreciate your patience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'll go back to one slide. I want to talk a little bit about Elias and Co. Um, what? Check out some Perfect. So this one, this one, um, this is really sort of our flagship store, Elias and Co. So um, again, this is a sketch that Ray did looking from the fountain. And we, we took the inspiration from early Los Angeles department mm -hmm. stores for this facade right here, which is going to, you know, it's our emporium. And so we developed a lot of the architecture based on some of the early Los Angeles department stores, but it's not any one of them in particular. And, and an interesting bit of trivia, um, Hollywood Boulevard in California Adventure, the buildings there are actual repre are representations of actual buildings. So if you go into Hollywood, you'll see some of those buildings in full size, full scale, uh, and you will recognize them. Buena Vista Street, as Coulter alluded to, is bits and pieces, but you won't recognize any of them because it's an amalgam. So we start developing color elevations, and uh, this is on the uh, this is the, the existing restroom facade. The restrooms are here. This facade is completely rebuilt. The lockers are here. This is the J.J. Newbery facade inspiration piece, which you'll see a detail of a little bit later. This is Mortimer's Market. It's like an open-air market. It was uh, based on a building that was at, um, on 6th Avenue and it was torn down in the 1930s in Los Angeles. Had incredible detail. You'll see a little bit of that. And we're recreating it all. And um, 
And further down the street, we've got um, Julius Katz and Sons going down to uh, the candy shop, and then we've got the um, Fiddler Pipe and Practical Cafe in the background. But again, you can see color, there's material, there's a lot of textures, mock-up panels, and samples that we're putting into all of this. This is to the other side of the street. Again, you can see the um, starting with the, the north, um, Oswald's gas station is not shown in this one, but we've got the, uh, this is um, the guest services and first aid. Um, this is Los Feliz Five and Dime, again, a cross section through the Hyperion Bridge. And this is the Elias and Co. facade along with the jewelry store. The candy shop's being moved and the uh, jewelry store is going into its place. And on the other, on the side of the west side of the street, we're expanding the bakery. So where the train was, um, we're putting in additional 80 indoor seats um, for at Fiddler Pfeiffer and Practical Cafe. And um, Clarabelle's hand scoop ice cream is getting a lot larger. So the ice cream shop will be coming back. <laughs> I got several complaints yesterday. Uh, I was very disappointed. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Um, and we do color boards. We do really extensive uh, color theory. Uh, Ray and I had some very interesting conversations with Katie, Katie Olson, our color. She's the color queen. I don't know if any of you know Katie, but she's great. But it's really difficult um, when you're putting together, you know, an idealized version of a Los Angeles street. But you know, it's a theme park, and you want to make it a happy place. And you know, a lot of color starts going on. There's a lot of adjacency issues and. Ray and I were out with uh, Katie once on a 103 degree day with two by two color panels, making sure they worked both in sun and shade. And yeah. I think the shady conversations were a lot longer than the sun. <laughs> well, you know, we, 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 we know a fair amount about color. And Katie is, is really the, the, the queen of color. So uh, when we were looking at color for the, hype, or the Carthay Circle, Katie had a color chip. Coulter and I both looked at it and we both shook our heads like this. She painted a panel, we went outside, looked at it in the sun, and we both shook our heads like this. <laughs> That's amazing. So, so, okay. so <laughs> there's always something to learn. Um, this is an interior shot of one of the shops. Um, in order to bring the fidelity of the outside, we're going to that excruciating degree of, of, of detail um, on the outside. It's very important for us, for credibility's sake, and to tell our story to bring that to the inside. So all of the shops that you see on Buena Vista Street will have full finished interiors that re reflect and represent uh, the exterior facades. So uh, you will see the same kind of detail that you see here, that you see on Main Street Disney, you'll see in, the, in those shops as opposed to what we currently have now. So. We're working very hard to make sure that all of this ties together in, in terms of storytelling and making this a credible place. The other thing about this street that we didn't really address is that, like the uh, Emporium at Disneyland, both sides of our street will have, will have uh, drive aisles through the shops so that in addition to entering the shops through the front doors, you'll be able to um, access them through an aisle that runs parallel to the point of this street that's within the shop so that um, if you wanted to stay cool and stay indoors and enjoy air conditioned comfort, you're, you'll be able to do that. And uh, we think this uh, this is going to allow this park to be much more flexible and, and much more uh, friendly to our to our guests. Another thing we.